Sanctified place, part four. Amen. Look at somebody and say, loving fellowship. Now, when you come in here, don't you want to be loved? Amen. Now, listen to this part, though. Let's see if you clap. Don't you want somebody to tell you the truth in love? Can you handle, look at somebody and say, can you handle that? Look at them and say, can you handle the truth in love? Tell them, say, the truth about yourself in love. Can you handle that? Can you handle the truth? You can't handle the truth. <laughs> had to do it. I had to. It's my favorite movie line of all times. Nicholson is the goat for that. But loving, <laughs> loving fellowship, adamantbeliever.com forward slash lovingfellowship.pdf. There's no need of us fellowshipping if we're not going to be loving. Amen. Amen. I was telling some people the other day, I was telling a guy, I was talking to a guy and I was just trying to encourage him or whatever. And he told me this story about how much he hated his father and uh, he just did this to him. He wrote his father a letter that just dogged his father out. All of these different things just went off on his father. And I told him, I said, well, dude, don't you understand you can't keep a good relationship with me if you feel like that about your father? Anybody in authority, you're going to take that out on Love, in order for you to love, you have to love across the board. You can't love if there's hate anywhere. I don't need nobody to tell me they love me and they hate somebody. Because one day you're going to get sick of me telling you the truth in love. Can I keep preaching in here? Boy, I ain't pulled up a slide and I done preached. Amen. Yeah, so loving, it's, a, it's time for us to love each other in this fellowship. Amen. Last week we talked about forgiving one another. This week we're talking about loving. Now let me tell you what witches do. You know, I was watching, somebody sent me, oh, it was Bishop, sent me um, a clip of Greg Larry. That's his name, right? Pastor. Real big church. So they've been after him because he's been against COVID since the beginning as well. But he has a big, big church. So they've been after him. And so he got up one Sunday and just said, I got the names of five witches that are in here. He said, three of y'all are in here in attendance right now. He said, and we got your address. What are witches doing in church? Let me tell you what witches do in church. Witches come for one reason. One reason. To change you. They good with who they are. They're a witch. They know they can't change me. So they're here to change you. You know how they change you? Change the way you behave. They want you, they want to create a situation to make you angry so you will come out of yourself and not love like God says love. See, the way you deny a witch access is to keep loving people. <laughs> they can't mess with you until you get mad angry and start hating somebody. That's what they wanted you to do. They want you to walk around with that in your heart and not the love of God. They can't kill nobody. Y'all think if witches could kill somebody, I'd still be here? They can't kill nobody. Hey Amen. They can't put nothing on you to make you. They can't, no. They can't do that. So they want to change your heart. So that the love you're supposed to have, you don't have anymore. So they come in church, stir up rucus, gossip, foolishness to change your heart so that the love you once showed, you don't even display anymore. They make you mad at somebody in here. You avoiding them and you don't like them no more. A witch did that.
So how do we fight witchcraft in ABC? Look at somebody say, love. love. Amen. Love. If you love one another, boy, you're going to hug that witch one time and her skin going to come off in your arms. She's going to be out of here. Just shed it like a snake. The shape of her in your arms. Love. She just like, <laughs> Yeah, they can't handle it. They won't hang around love. I promise you, they won't hang around it. You know, we're not going to give that kind of attention where we up all the time. Oh, and witches, right now, Sue, get up, Betty, right now. We're not even doing that. We're going to handle it this way. We're going to love her wicked tail. Love that green right off of her skin. We are love you, baby. Nobody a hugger, cause you know she just over there. We gonna come up, we gonna hug you, and we gonna love on you. We not gonna let you be mad at us for loving on you. Amen. Amen. And it always happens when church start fill it up. You know, we grew. I mean, we probably one of the. It's crazy. We grew during the pandemic. That was crazy. Knocked the wall out during the time when folks wasn't in church. So God has blessed us. Well, the other part of that is once, they, <laughs> once folks start coming, witches can slip in there. Scoot on in. Amen. Amen. Ain't no male witches. Ain't no males. Now, it's men controlled by them. They use male authority. But they just slip on in there and cause mess. Well, we going to love them, whoever they are. Amen? Hug you and squeeze all the... Just get it out, baby. Get it all out. What a world. What a world. What a world. We going to squeeze it all out. Man, <laughs> loving fellowship, love that right out of you, amen, the words of Jesus, Matthew 5 and 43, picking up where we left off, ye have heard that it hath been said, thou shalt what? Love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. That was the law. Right? But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. See, some folks want to just believe the law just so they can hate their enemies. Man, you done, you done got into a whole Hebrew Israelite situation just so you can hate people? Just so you can stick it to the white man? You don't want to hear what Jesus said because Jesus said, love your enemies, bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Look at somebody and say, I want to be like Jesus. Man, we had our focus prayer this Wednesday and it was powerful. Oh, but in the playback, you know, I'm playing them back because we're creating the podcast for it so that people will be able to get the prayers and man on the playback boy was something I said and it got quiet in the house everybody was agreeing oh yeah yeah Lord forgive us for what we did everybody oh yeah 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 I said now Lord forgive them for what they did to us <laughs> crickets I said my good it got quiet oh that's hard though I said it too it, it, that's a hard one to pray for forgiveness for somebody that has persecuted you and probably still persecuting you. And you have to pray for God to forgive them because they won't get forgiveness? Yeah, that's hard. But look at somebody and say, you still have to do it. If you want to go to heaven. Ooh, listen to the 
them claps. Let's move on. <laughs> you still have to do it, whether you do it in here during prayer or not. You got to pray for forgiveness for folks that hurt you. You got to do good to them that hate you. And you got to pray for them which despitefully use you. Pray for that mother-in-law that uses her daughter against you. Pray for that husband that listened to everything his mama say over your word. You got to pray for that situation. Ooh, 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 somebody, oh, 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 oh. somebody's manifested. I got to go cast that out. Nah, this ain't coming out. <laughs> you don't know a pastor. You don't know. No, this ain't coming out. Leave this alone. You don't know. Yeah, some men do that. They just so whipped by their mom that they don't know how to leave and cleave like the Bible said. Hey Amen. You ain't ever supposed to take your mama's advice over your wife. Bruh. Oh, I just blessed somebody right there. You should give extra in the visitor's center. I just blessed your home. Y'all was on the brink of divorce over that little issue. I just fixed it for you. Stop listening to your mama. Stand up to her and tell her, no, mama, I'm sorry. I'm leaving and I'm cleaving. I married this woman and now me and her are one. Mama, we not one no more. Amen. Cut the ambiblical in the spirit. You still got that thing on it. It should have been healed by now. I know I'm telling you, you know, black folk, we don't know the name or something. We just call it a thing. <laughs> that needed to be said to somebody. Hey, man, that's the most uncomfortable situation in the world when a woman is trying to submit to the leadership of a husband and the mother-in-law is interfering. And now the man is submitting to both of them. He's crazy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully persecute you. Amen. Loving your enemies does not mean you have to stay around people that are poisonous to you or a danger to you. Amen. That felt good. Somebody, whoa. That's all I needed. I'm leaving now. All right. See y'all next week. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I needed to hear. No, I don't mean that. That's not what the Bible is saying. Acts 15 and 39 gives us an instance where even two very powerful apostles disagreed and had to split from one another. It says, and the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. So Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. So Barnabas and Paul had to split because they could not agree. God Obviously, God didn't want them together because the path one was on was going to hinder the path of the other one. Amen. Now, listen, the blessed part of this, the reason well, the blessed part of Paul and the reason I believe the anointing stayed with him to write the Bible was because of the way he handled this situation. So later on, the Bible tells us he and John Mark actually reconcile right but the bible doesn't mention barnabas and him reconciling at all but paul never told barnabas's business he did not talk down to Bar on barnabas in the bible after this situation he didn't try to make him look bad dog him out because he made the wrong decision yeah yeah, he kept his mouth off of him. Because Paul didn't know what God was going to do with Barnabas. Just because he left, don't be. Amen. Amen. I learned this principle when I was young. So people that work with me, do things for me, you ain't going to ever hear me publicly bust nobody out. Because first of all, I thank everybody that has ever helped me with anything. And the second thing, I don't know what God, I don't know the end of that story. 
So why would I condemn somebody just because they're not with me anymore? That's why you ain't heard me do it. I don't do that. Amen. Oh, boy, folk. Amen. Somebody like, well, well I do. <laughs> Mess up with me, brother. I'm going to be on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, you don't do that. You don't do that because you don't know what God is going to do. Can I keep going? It does mean, though, that you pray for them. No matter what they, look at somebody say, no matter what they've done. No matter what they've done to you. I'm going to need you today. It's going to get heated in here. Hey Amen. Some folks going to split like Barnabas. It does mean that you pray for them no matter what they've done to you. Not a prayer filled with revenge. Oh, God, bust them. Bust them out, Lord. Oh, expose them, make just destroy them. No, we don't pray those prayers. I'm scared to pray them kind of prayers. Amen? You don't come before God like that trying to kill somebody. Give me the permission, Lord. Just tell me how, to, how you want it done. Because I know you know how to help me get away with it. Something wrong with you. Something is wrong. You ain't saved. And you watch too many movies. But not a prayer with filled with revenge, but a prayer of forgiveness toward them. Can you pray a prayer of forgiveness? That's how you know a demon is involved. When you can't pray a prayer of forgiveness for them, there's a devil in the details. I'm not talking about in their details, in your details. There's something in your heart that you need to pray to God to get out. You don't let the devil put something in your heart and you keep it there. Anything keeping you from being Christ-like is from the devil. And Christ says, forgive. Ooh, some folk in here. You don't know what they did. You don't understand. You don't know. It doesn't matter what they did. I had somebody put that on one of our pages or something. You, just, you see, he just... G. Craig just making it a big blanket like you just supposed to forgive everything people do. First of all, I didn't say that. The Bible said that. Luke 6 and 28, bless them that curse you and do what? Anybody been despitefully used? Somebody just doing stuff to you just to watch you be hurt. That's happened to anybody in here? Yeah. You got to pray for them. Amen. Tap somebody on the shoulder and say, are you going to pray for them for real? Come on, y'all. Now, we're not playing no games in here. This is, this is real. God wants you to hear this today. Amen. This was the Sunday you should have slept in. But you decided to come. Now you done got the truth and you can't ignore it. Now you actually have to go do something. Amen. No matter what they've done. But if they kill your dog, pastor, you can't get the dog back. Pray for them. Amen. You can't turn into John Wick. You got to pray for him. three movies worth of revenge. Oh, a dog. You gonna kill 3,000 people. <laughs> Doing good to them that hate you. It had to be 3,000. Doing good to them that hate you means that you do not tear them down. Ooh, this next one. <coughs> mm, that's the nest coming up. 
Jack. <laughs> John gonna get a kick out of that. But <laughs> doing good to them that hate you means that you do not tear them down or Y'all ready? <laughs> Keep telling others what they did to you. Because every time you bring it up, you bring the devil up. And all the progress you made, the devil gets them long, crusty fingernails and snatch you back. All the progress you made was erased because you told somebody else. Oh, this is a tough one. Because you know you want to tell folks. You know, the devil will corrupt your mind and make you think you helping people by telling them. I'm just sparing you from what happened to me and I don't want you to get into trouble I did and I'm trying to save you because I was a... nah bruh <laughs> nah every time you tell somebody the devil pulls you back amen and you lose a battle In order to truly love them, you must let go of their sins and not attempt to get others united against them. See, because we can't judge hearts. That's why we can't counsel folks. Can't counsel nobody out because we don't know hearts. So we can't say God is done with somebody. What if somebody did you like that? You know God should have been done with you. He said, blessed are the merciful because they will what? Obtain mercy. In other words, the ones that aren't merciful will not obtain mercy. Can I preach it? Ooh, listen to the hand claps. Thank you, Pierre. I'm going to start calling folks out when they clap. Because it's just, I'm, I'm struggling. Y'all, this room is raggedy. Yeah. Proverbs 26 and 22, the words of a talebearer are as wounds. So every time you tell somebody, you cause wounds. And they go down into the what? Can I keep going? But a word will minister all by itself. Amen. Matthew 5 and 45. That ye may be the children of your father which is in heaven. Don't you want to be a child of the father? Children of the father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. And sending rain on the just and on the unjust. People think that's judgment. He's going to send judgment on it. No, he sends rain. Beautiful rain that grows things on the just and the unjust. For if, because you ain't God, you don't understand. Why would he rain on the unjust? Because he's God. And he's trying to get you like him. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have you? Anybody can do that. Do not even the tax collectors do that? How were they collecting taxes back then? Because they were always the example. <laughs> the bad example. Boy, do you, you want to be a tax collector or do you want to see Jesus? I'm like, what is the job description? Why would he <laughs> collecting taxes by spear? That ain't enough! <laughs> <laughs> I 
And if ye salute your brethren only, what do you? What do ye more than others? Don't even the tax collectors do that too? If you're just saluting your brothers, you're not going to salute those that are your enemies? That don't like you? Amen. You see them in a the grocery store and I mean you done <laughs> broke the wheel on the cart trying to turn the corner and get away. Is that so? Stop! <laughs> Guess it. Get home. Mama, where's the soup? Man, I couldn't get no chicken. <laughs> so and so was standing over there. <laughs> she was standing by that freezer. I wasn't going over there. So we all just hungry tonight. <laughs> you would go down the chicken aisle and broke the wheel. Had to pay $30. To the grocery store. Ma'am, you broke the wheel. We saw it. Because you don't want to salute somebody you got a problem with. Can I keep preaching in here? Mm. Loving those that hate you is what God does. Yeah. Somebody, what is wrong? I'm going to keep going anyway, baby. I'll just look at you. <laughs> Loving those that hate you is what God does. He loved the world so much that he offered his son for everyone that would accept him. Amen. No matter what they have done, they can receive forgiveness and what? A new start in Christ. Folks, abandoning Christianity because Jesus made this too easy. They don't want people to be forgiven that easy for what was done to them. No, that's not enough. No, he can't just repent. He can't just say he's sorry. I need to see some groveling and some, I need him to come and pay some money. Romans 5 and 8, uh, you know, they do that until they need the grace and the mercy. You standing in court and the judge finna just send you up. <laughs> Julian, can you tell the brothers to pray for us? I don't have pastor number because he blocked me. Because I will block you. <laughs> he loved the world so much. Romans 5 and 8. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were what? Yes. Yet sinners. So we were all sinners. And Christ died for us. Yes. Amen. <laughs> he allowed those that hate him. To experience sunshine and rain just like everyone else. Man, what kind of loving God is that? These folks cursing God and enjoying the sunshine and rain. Cursing God and getting paychecks. Driving nice cars and wearing nice clothes. Hate God. Cursing God. Worshiping devils. And God is allowing it with his love to give them a space to find Jesus. Look at somebody and say, I'm taking advantage of that space. Amen. He allowed them to experience good things in his life no matter how much they hate on him. Psalm 73 and 12. Be, behold, these are the ungodly. Who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. God allows them to increase. In riches. In their sin. That's a merciful God. That's a loving God. It won't last long. Because at some point. If they don't accept Jesus. Or find Jesus. It's a wrap. 
And it wasn't because God didn't love them. Because look at the time he gave them. They chose. Can I preach in this place? It's easy to show love to those that, you, that, that love you. Showing love to those that hate you is difficult. Is that difficult? Is it difficult? How many will agree that that's difficult? Okay. We all on the same page. Amen. Showing love to those. And it's hard to show love when you don't love them. That's why you got to love them. It's easier to show. <laughs> oh, I'm tired of showing love at these folks I hate. <laughs> Try loving them. It'll be a little easier. Just a little bit. Showing love to those that hate you is difficult, especially when they hate the God in you. Man, you hate the God in me? You hate me because I'm saved? You think I think I'm better than you just because I made a good choice? You can make it. Hey, man, you can make the same choice. You think you better than everybody just because you saved and acting right and stuff. Try this lifestyle. You wouldn't even make it out in these streets. I'm good. But showing love to those that hate you is difficult, especially when they hate the God in you. However, we must not judge them prematurely because they could be won by our response to them. Look at somebody. No, no they won't. No, they won't. No, they ain't gonna be won. Ain't no hope. They might be won by your response. First Corinthians 4 and 5. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart. So he's the one that's gonna judge the heart. Then shall every man have praise with God. He's gonna judge the heart. You don't judge the heart. So that, that means that you don't know what could happen. There's people in here that I just knew Beelzebub sent them here. And I love them and we good now. Real good now. And if I had judged that situation before time, I would have lost an asset in many cases. So you got to sit back and just let it play out. Can I preach in here? Matthew 5 and 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. What does he mean? Perfect love. His love is perfect. That means you are to love perfectly. What does that look like? Love no matter what. What if he get on your nerves and, and won't help you clean up the house? You hate your husband? You hate your wife? I need you to reserve that for something else. In your house, somebody's in your house that you hate, so you have to wake up every day to that. No, no, you got to be perfect like the Lord, love everybody. And it's easy to do once you deal with your issues. That's, that's the only thing standing in between you and God's perfect love is your issues. When you deal with yourself, this is not that hard. This is only hard when it's overcoming yourself. Amen. You got a problem with something that happened, somebody Life did you wrong. So now you're entitled to something. And it's blocking you from having God's perfect love. The perfect love of the Lord is loving even when it's not deserved. That's the perfect love of God. Even when it's not deserved, you love anyway. Boy, if I, oh, if I told y'all the story of the way folks do me and this woman right here. 
We love them unconditionally. Y'all know we love, everybody in here, do we love y'all unconditionally? I mean, we love folks. Buy them stuff, take them places, do give them stuff. Just love, love, love. And man, they will forget it in a heartbeat. I mean, not just forget it, but become our enemies. In the twinkling of an eye, we don't know what happened. What happened? They mad at us now. But we don't stop loving them. Amen. Amen. Human, humanly, they may not, we, you may think they don't deserve it anymore, but we don't shut it off like that. We love folks even when it's not deserved. Now, we're working on it. We're human, so sometimes we want to call him a jive sucker. <laughs> we're humans, but ultimately we're going to keep loving him. Love the jive sucker right out of him. The perfect love of the Lord is loving even when it is not can you love without expecting love back? Ooh, these are some hard lessons, boy. These are the hard saying of Jesus Christ. You can love without it being reciprocated. You probably wouldn't even divorced if you could have done this. Somebody went through a period, they just, your spouse shut down and wasn't the same person you married or whatever. And I mean, you passed judgment and everything within that little time frame because you wasn't getting love back. Instead of praying for them and loving them anyway through that period. Because it's supposed to be a lifetime. Amen. Things happen, you know, I'm not saying that. Some of y'all have... Stuff that happened in your past or whatever, and God has, you know, moved you on from that relationship, or you moved on from it. Whatever the case, we ain't talking about those logistics. We'll get into those hard sayings of Jesus at another time. <laughs> but right now we're dealing with these. <laughs> can you love without expecting it back? Amen. Amen. Can you do that on your job? You might get a raise. <laughs> Amen. Why you keep getting mad at your boss? You don't think your boss know you mad at him? You have to work there and get money from them. They pay for you to eat and feed your family. I would be trying to show love. I don't care what they do. Oh, you're late again. Man, look, I, I, you're right. Man, I'm sorry, man. Something just came up. <laughs> and don't be looking at me like, <laughs> get fired man the way you handle stuff boy it'll change people's minds me and my son me and Jonathan was riding the other day I was trying to see how fast I could go from zero to 60 if I had heard it could do about 2.9 so I'm trying to do that so I'm in Arlington I wasn't on the freeway or nothing. I'm on the side road. I just, I'm crazy. But I, it just felt good, you know. It just felt like this was the time. So I'm like, you know, well, my son, I want to jerk him back. And so I just punched it. Pow, I just go. Just go. And I looked in the rearview mirror. Woo! Pulled over, a little lady got out. She came up, she said, do you know how fast you were going? I said, no, she said, I don't either. <laughs> she said, you shot by, I jumped and she said, I have a Hemi engine and I could not catch you. So in my heart of hearts, I'm thinking, <laughs> they weren't lying, it will do that. But I had my son with me, and Jonathan ain't never been stopped by the cops, so he thinking I'm finna get beat. <laughs> so he's sitting over there just... <laughs> 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 
What's about to happen? So I told her, I said, she said, have you been drinking? Have you? I said, no. I said, look, I was just trying to show. See, I heard that this car had like a real fast zero to 60. So I was just trying to do it. Had my son in here, trying to show him. I just wanted to see. I said, I am very sorry. I'm sorry. She said, give me your license and your registration, whatever. She took it back. She came back. She said, it's a pretty nice car. <laughs> she said, that steering wheel is that's pretty cool. She said, just slow down. I'm just going to give you a warning. She said, next time you do zero to 60, do it on the on-ramp. <laughs> and she said, and then once you get to 60, slow down. I said, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. She let me go. But if she had pulled up, oh! <laughs> I'm a sovereign more. You can't. <laughs> Jonathan, they're getting ready to kill us. Jonathan, they're getting ready to brace, brace for impact. They're getting ready to shoot us. They're going to shoot us. I'm filming. I'm filming. I'm filming. Uh, sir, I didn't even tell you to get out. Jonathan, Jonathan, make sure, make sure my son's okay. People act like that. I just told the truth and I did it calmly. I was just a hundred percent honest. My son don't need to see me at the food. No, I wouldn't speak. He over there all just. <laughs> I wouldn't speak. Tell him, Jonathan. We weren't going fast. <laughs> Amen. But I showed love by telling the truth. I told the truth in love. Amen. Now, they ain't going to always let you go, Elder Trent. That ain't what I'm saying. And I was deserving of a reprimand because I broke the law. Y'all forgive me? Amen. Okay. Y'all forgive me, right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> but perfect love, the perfect love of the Lord is loving even when it's not reciprocated. In that case, it was reciprocated. But if she had been, nah, see, you speed up, I'm giving you a ticket. Ah, here's the biggest ticket I can give you. I'd have to just reach in there and say, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Give me the ticket. Couldn't call her a witch till she walked off and made sure she was in her car and go. <laughs> that's pol police brutality. No, I mean, that's, uh, what is it? <laughs> Hurting the officer. But perfect love, if you act right, sometimes you can just change people's response to you. It's hard for somebody to keep coming after you angrily. Because they're only trying to provoke you, but if you just show them love every time, they'll get tired. Oh, I'm tired of messing with him because it's not working. He won't break character. Can I keep preaching? The perfect love of the Lord is loving even when it is what? Thank you. Even when somebody did, they disagree with you, you still love them. When they oppose you, you still love them. Summary! Man, this was good. Amen. I know what my mama gonna say after service. Don't you be speeding with that boy in the car. <laughs> look at her. Look at her. See, she's like, yeah, yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. Yes. Oh, he had fun. Yeah, fun jumping. <laughs> But it's very easy to love people that treat you well and show you love and kindness. But can you love a person? Listen to this. See, watch how this is worded because God dealt with my heart. Oh, there's so many of y'all in here that are struggling with love. 
So can you love a person that is struggling with loving others? So they're not lashing out at you. They're not mad at you. They don't hate you. They're struggling to love because of what happened to them. Some people came to this church because they got so devastatingly hurt by people at the old church. So they come here with a chip on their shoulder already because they're struggling to love. That's why we have to make sure we're always showing love because we don't know what people went through. So many today struggle with sin because they struggle with loving people. You struggle with loving people, you're going to struggle with sin. They pervert sex because they do not trust the love or trust love enough to keep it in the confines of marriage. They struggle with anger and bitterness because a person they trusted hurt them or betrayed them. They struggle with unforgiveness because someone took their love and used it against them. They struggle with low self-esteem and self-hatred. Because someone didn't love them properly or did not love them unconditionally. That's why you struggle with low self-esteem. Somebody did not love you unconditionally. You have a negative image of yourself because somebody did not unconditionally love you. They put a stipulation on the love. Or they rejected you. Now their love is conditional, and they cannot let go of what people do to them. If you don't deal with this issue, your love will become unconditional. I mean, your love will become conditional, and you won't be able to let go of what people do. And you'll be old talking about what they did to you. You won't be able to get past it. How you doing, brother? Well, you know what they did. <laughs> Who? <laughs> you know, back in the day, man, it was this. You can't get past it. These are serious problems when it comes to a fellowship of believers. If people in the fellowship are struggling with these love issues, they will eventually turn against and attempt to destroy one another. Yeah, if you're struggling with love issues, you're going to turn against the fellowship. All because they struggle with loving one another unconditionally. If people would consider their own sins, their own failures, and all those they have hurt, they would be more loving and gracious toward others. That's why God don't let me tell it on nobody. I get before him go to calling names of what folks did, and God be like, hey, you really want to go here? You really want to go down this list? It's like, Lord, don't go to the sea now. That's the sea of forgetfulness. Well, it's the sea of forgetfulness only if you forgetting what others have done. Everything goes in the sea. Don't you be pulling up, fishing in somebody else's sea. You know what you're going to catch? Something out of yours. Wait a minute. I remember this fish. Get somewhere. And sit down. Yeah. Man, I'm preaching in this place. Woo. We cannot come to God without adopting his ways. We are to model him and be his representation in the earth. Y'all agree with that? Yeah. This requires us to love on the just as well as the what? Thank you. I told you, I'm going to need that. Folk don't like that part. I mean, but we got to love on the just as well as the unjust. We must show the love of God to those that we deem evil or malicious, even when correcting them.
They're going to get it, Elder. It's, it's, I'm, we gonna keep pre I'm going to keep preaching until you get it. You're going to have to face these folks again. You mad at family members? What's going to happen at a funeral? A wedding. You're going to sit in a church at a funeral. Somebody is dead. And you're going to be sitting there wishing somebody else was dead? I wish they could get in that casket. You're going to be in that funeral? Not even thinking that this person is dead and when you're dead, it's over? So I should be trying to get, get it right because that could be me in there. A funeral? Now I understand. Maybe a wedding you can carry some kind of bitterness. But a funeral? There's a dead body in there that could be you. And folks pick funerals to act like, you know, that's monkey time in the African-American community. Hey, man, that's evolutionary eight. Jumping all on the, whoo, 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 whoo. that's what we act a fool at a funeral. White people, I don't know how y'all funerals go. I've heard they're just nice. And quick, just nice, just a nice funeral. I heard, I've, I've heard. Back when we was in a, we had our stage band, back our high school stage band, we actually played in one of the delicates of, of the city, played at their funeral. And man, it was just spectacular. It was over quick, quiet. And I'm sitting there like, man, why can't all funerals be this way? Because the black one just right across the street, you could hear them. <laughs> That's where you meet brothers you didn't know you had, sisters you didn't know. Like, Who is that? Look just like me. Uh, well, you know, some things you didn't know about the one that's in the casket. Huh? Man, temptation song just thought pop up was a roll. <laughs> you start meeting folks. Man, everybody got freckles. Wow. What a coincidence. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's our funeral. <laughs> Amen. Y'all know how it go. But we cannot come to God without adopting his ways. This requires us to love on the just as well as the unjust. We must show the love of God to those that we deem evil or malicious even when correcting them. We cannot savagely destroy people or break people's spirits when they are contrary or disagreeable to us. Be very, amen. Be very careful with that. Don't try to break. So when somebody makes a mistake or makes an error, be very careful that you're not taking out your own low self-esteem on them to try to break their spirit and break them down and make them grovel and oh you ain't showing me enough sorry don't do that oh cause when that comes back the flying foot of fate comes and you gonna get kicked don't treat people like that you let them off the hook that's okay let me, let me, let me wrap this up it sounds like Wednesday we have to speak the truth in love, considering ourselves and all that we have overcome. Did you forget all that you've overcome? Did God make you grovel? No, he, provi he provided Christ for that. So that you could come back to him. So you can't forget. You got to keep remembering all that you've overcome. Before you pass that kind of judgment on someone else. Showing this kind of love will keep fellowship free of drama and devils. I don't want a fellowship with the devil. I don't want the devil watching the game. I don't want him in there. Eating the snacks and high five. I don't want the devil in there. 
No, so it'll keep the fellowship free of drama and devils. The devil cannot even operate when the perfect love of God is exemplified. Because perfect love does what? Only way the devil can operate is if there's some fear there. Perfect love cast out all fear. First John 4 and 17, herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we, where? In this world as his representative. There is no fear in love, but perfect love does what? Cast out fear because fear hath torment, fears of the devil. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first what? Loved us. If a man, now he first loved us while we were sinners. We love him because while we were sinners, he loved us. So if a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God who he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him. Is it an option? Is it a suggestion? He said this commandment we have from him. That he who loveth God love his brother also. Everyone stand to your feet. Oh, the world was thick in here today. How many of you need it, though? Amen. Keep the truth coming, Lord. This is working us all over, man. We got to be ready to see Jesus when he returns. Can't nothing be in our heart. Can't nothing be in our mouth. Can't nothing, we can't be in our feelings. You know, folk that's in their feelings are not going to see Jesus. Amen. So we got to make sure we ain't in our feelings. We're not operating because of something somebody did, somebody said. Man, should nothing be operating through you but the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Not the way you were raised, not what they said about you, not somebody's opinion of you, not the person that hurt you, not the stuff you've been carrying all those years. None of that. Only the Holy Ghost God needs to operate through us. Amen. Amen. If that's you, you want to get free from this stuff, just come on up. We're going to pray and trust God. That we will be able to love like we're supposed to. Love. I want to love like I'm supposed to. I got to get bitterness out of my heart. Hatred out of my heart. I got to get it all out. I want my heart free for the Holy Ghost to operate through. I just want the Holy Ghost to operate in my heart. Just the Holy Ghost. Not what somebody did. What someone said. Not somebody's opinion or somebody else. I don't need that. I need the Holy Ghost to operate through me. I don't need to be feeling some kind of way about a relative. Someone in my own house, my own husband and wife. What is that? Can't be hating folks. Gotta let this go. Can't be holding stuff. Can't be resenting people. And then raising our hands, talking about I love you, Lord. He just said, no, you don't. He said, it's impossible. You can't until you love your brother. So let's fix it. Everyone just bow your heads. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this word today. Father God, we thank you, God, for your truth. No matter how hard it is, we accept it. No matter how hard the truth about us is we accept it and God we're not going to be the ones that turn it away and, and just not apply it but God we want it to work for us so God take away all hatred malice anything that's in our heart about someone else anything someone put there anything Father God that was placed there anything that happened to us that put it there whatever the case wherever it came from Father God, we speak against it right now that we will have a clean heart. Clean our heart. Wash it and regenerate it with the washing and regeneration of your word, Lord God. Let your word cleanse it right now. Remove it from us, God. Take it away, that hatred, that 
that, that low esteem, whatever it is and wherever it came from, remove it, God, so we can love you right. We can love you properly. Father God, and most importantly, we can forgive those that have hurt us. We can pray for those that have hurt us. We can pray for those that have despitefully used us. We can pray for those that have persecuted us. We can pray for those that have called us out of our name. Father God, try to disrupt our families. Try to destroy our family. Father God, those that have come against us for no other reason other than just to be, to have pleasure in seeing us suffer. We pray for them right now, God. We pray for them. Something must be really wrong if that's what they want to do to us. So God, we pray for our enemies right now. We pray for those that have done these things in Jesus' name. And God, we will not let it rest in our heart. No witch will have access to us because we are carrying hatred in our heart. God, we pray against it right now. We pray against that spell that was done because of the hatred in our heart. Father God, we pray against the hand of the enemy over our life that has been operating because of hatred in our heart. God, remove the hatred in the name of Jesus. That hatred that blocks marriage. That hatred that blocks childbirth. That hatred, Father God, that blocks good relationships. That hatred that's in our way. We cast it out right now and we accept your love, God. Unconditional love. To love those that hate us. To love those that despitefully use us. To love those that have turned against us. To love those that don't love us back. We pray right now for that love. The love of God. To fill our hearts right now. Come on, lift your hands up. Fill us with your Holy Ghost. Fill us with your Holy Ghost, Lord. That we may have the fruits of your spirit, which is love. Fill us, God. So we can love our neighbors right. Fill us, God. Fill us in the name of Jesus. If love is here, there's no place for hate. So fill us in the name that is above every name we pray. And we receive it right now. We receive it right now. We receive it right now. With our hands lifted up and our hands open, we just release. We release anything that's not like you. Anything we feel about someone anything we've been saying God we're not going to talk about it anymore we're not going to bring it up anymore we're not going to testify for the devil anymore but we release it right now in the name of Jesus it's gone away from us and fill us with love in its place in Jesus name we pray amen hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. 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 Now come on, hug somebody. Hug somebody and say, I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Come on, I'm not going to talk about it anymore. It's over now. Hallelujah. Nothing but love resides here. It's over and done. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus went to Calvary to save a rich like you and me. That's love. Come on, sing it if you know it. Stretched him wide.